Welcome to our JavaScript interview prep series. Getting ready for a JavaScript interview, especially for advanced roles, can be a little nerve-wracking. But don't worry, we've got your back. In this video, we'll cover 10 advanced JavaScript interview questions and their answers to help you ace your next interview. We'll dive deep into each concept, providing clear explanations and practical examples. What is a higher order function in JavaScript? A higher order function can accept other functions as arguments or return a function. This allows for more abstract and flexible code. Higher order functions make your code more concise, readable, and reusable. They allow you to write less code while achieving more functionality, which is a hallmark of efficient programming. Imagine a function that creates multiplier functions. You give it a number, and it returns a new function that multiplies any input by that number. This is a practical example of how higher order functions can be used to generate new functions dynamically. That's higher order functions in action. Understanding them thoroughly will impress your interviewers. They demonstrate your ability to think abstractly and write efficient, modular code. So be sure to practice using higher order functions and be ready to explain their benefits. You might be asked to write one during a technical interview so familiarity is key. What are first class functions in JavaScript? In JavaScript, functions are treated just like any other variable. You can assign them to variables, pass them as arguments, and return them from other functions. For example, you can store a greeting function in a variable and call it later. You can also pass this function to another function that executes it. Functions can even return other functions, creating custom greeting functions based on a name you provide. This flexibility makes JavaScript powerful and expressive. What is the difference between an arrow function and a normal function in JavaScript? Arrow functions have a shorter syntax using an arrow, equal sign, instead of the traditional function keyword. This makes the code more concise and easier to read. More importantly, arrow functions have lexical this binding, meaning the value of this inside an arrow function always refers to the this of the surrounding scope. This is particularly useful in scenarios where you want to maintain the context of this such as in event handlers or callbacks. In traditional functions, the value of this can change depending on how the function is called. This can lead to unexpected behavior if not handled carefully. For example, when a traditional function is used as a method, this refers to the object the method is called on. However, if the same function is assigned to a variable and called, this might refer to the global object or be undefined in strict mode. This difference in this binding is crucial to understand, as it affects how functions behave in different contexts. Arrow functions are often preferred in modern JavaScript due to their concise syntax and predictable behavior of this. They are especially useful in functional programming patterns and when working with array methods like map, filter, and reduce. However, it's important to note that arrow functions do not have their own arguments object, and they cannot be used as constructors. When asked about the differences, highlight the syntax, the handling of this, and the context in which each type of function shines. Traditional functions are still useful in certain scenarios, such as when you need a function with its own this context, or when using the arguments object. Understanding these distinctions will help you write better code. By choosing the appropriate type of function for your specific use case, you can avoid common pitfalls and make your code more readable and maintainable. What are callbacks in JavaScript and how are they used? Asynchronous programming is a powerful concept that allows your code to perform multiple tasks simultaneously without waiting for each task to complete before moving on to the next. This is particularly useful in web development, where you often need to fetch data from a server or handle user interactions without freezing the user interface. A callback is a function passed as an argument to another function, executed once the asynchronous operation is complete. This means that the main function can continue running other code while waiting for the callback to be invoked. Callbacks are essential for handling tasks like reading files, making network requests, or processing user input. For example, when fetching data from an API, you pass a callback function to handle the data once it's retrieved. This allows your application to remain responsive, as it doesn't have to wait idly for the data to arrive. Instead, it can continue executing other code and only process the data when it becomes available. This allows your code to continue running other tasks without being blocked. Imagine a scenario where your application needs to perform several tasks at once, such as updating the user interface, 
processing user input, and fetching data from a server. Asynchronous programming makes this possible by allowing these tasks to run concurrently. Callbacks are the backbone of asynchronous programming in JavaScript. They provide a way to ensure that certain code is executed only after a specific task has been completed. This is crucial for maintaining the flow and logic of your application, especially when dealing with operations that take an unpredictable amount of time. They enable you to handle events, manage data flow and create responsive applications. By using callbacks you can ensure that your application remains interactive and responsive, even when performing complex operations. This is particularly important in modern web development, where user experience is paramount. Understanding callbacks is crucial for writing efficient JavaScript code. Without a solid grasp of how callbacks work, you may find yourself struggling to manage asynchronous operations effectively. This can lead to issues such as unresponsive applications, difficult to maintain code, and bugs that are hard to track down. Be prepared to discuss how they work in detail during your interview. Employers often look for candidates who have a deep understanding of asynchronous programming and can explain how they use callbacks to manage complex tasks. Demonstrating your knowledge in this area can set you apart from other candidates. What is the difference between apply, call, and bind in JavaScript? Call calls a function with a specified this value and arguments passed individually. Apply, similar to call, but arguments are passed as an array. Bind returns a new function with a fixed this value and initial arguments. What is the event loop in JavaScript? The event loop constantly checks the call stack and the callback queue. When a function calls another function, it's added to the call stack. Asynchronous operations add callback functions to the callback queue. The event loop picks up the first callback from the queue when the call stack is empty. This ensures asynchronous operations don't block the main thread. Understanding the event loop is crucial for writing efficient JavaScript applications. It helps you grasp how asynchronous operations are handled. Be prepared to discuss the event loop during your interview. Demonstrate your knowledge of how it works. What is the difference between undefined and not defined? Is an error for a variable that hasn't been declared. Means the variable exists but has no value. Means the variable doesn't exist in the current scope. Understanding this distinction is crucial for debugging. Be prepared to explain it with examples during your interview. It shows a good grasp of JavaScript's variable handling. What is the difference between for each, map, and reduce? For each, loops through an array and performs an action for each element but it does not return anything, that is it returns undefined. Map, transforms the array by applying a function to each element and returns a new array. Reduce, reduces the array to a single value by applying a function to each element with an accumulator. What is the purpose of the new keyword in JavaScript? The new keyword creates instances of objects using constructor functions. Constructor functions define the properties and methods of objects. Using, a new object is created and is set to the new object. The constructor function's code executes adding properties and methods. The keyword implicitly returns the new object. This allows you to create multiple instances from the same blueprint. Understanding the keyword is crucial for object-oriented programming. What are set timeout and set interval? Executes code after a specified delay. Repeatedly executes code at a fixed interval. Both functions are asynchronous, meaning they don't block other code. Is useful for adding delays. Is useful for scheduling repeated tasks. Understanding these functions is crucial for various tasks. Practice using them in different scenarios. Be prepared to discuss their use cases in your interview. This knowledge will help you create responsive applications. Thanks for watching. We hope these questions and answers help you prepare for your next JavaScript interview. Remember practice makes perfect. Feel free to ask any questions or seek clarification on topics discussed. Part 2, coming very soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more interview prep videos. We're constantly adding new content to help you succeed in your tech career. Good luck with your interview and remember, you've got this.